So let me first welcome uh, Luis de Guindos, the, the Vice President of the, of the ECB. We're just one minute ahead of time. There are people uh, connecting online. I hope they don't connect only because you're going to start your, your speech. But let me fill the one minute gap by simply saying that uh, some people in the room or online may remember, I did present you with mostly technical, highly boring, complex charts earlier on, analytical stuff in a, in a nutshell. And I said we reserve the details on the policy aspects for the Vice President of the ECB. His speech uh, later today would give you the relevant perspective from the policymaker, decision maker level. And that's now the time for it. So you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Jerome. Good afternoon to everyone. Let's continue with this fascinating, as Piero has, uh, has said, uh, uh, topic. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I will start, if I, if I may, uh, stating that it's a real pleasure to address you once again at this annual joint conference on European financial integration. Over the years, this, this platform has become an important forum for discussing the key issues shaping the financial landscape of the Union. The discussions and analysis we heard uh, in today's session provide valuable perspectives on how we can foster financial integration. The conference is also very timely, coming just before a new European Commission will have to shape the policy agenda for the coming years. Financial in integration and financial stability are key to ensuring a resilient and prosperous future for Europe. Despite the resilience shown during the recent unprecedented times, marked by significant global geopolitical and economic shocks, progress towards greater financial integration in the EU area has been disappointing overall. Over the past two years, price and quantity-based measures of financial integration have declined substantially. In fact, we are back to the levels seen at the start of the monetary union. And this is uh, despite the significant legislative efforts made over the past decade. Cross-border financial market activities and risk sharing have not recorded any growth. Financial integration has shown little progress in terms of cross-border bank lending and equity markets. Yet, these markets are key to helping small and medium-sized enterprises, the backbone of the euro area economy, to overcome their financing, their financing challenges. They are also a critical source of risk capital for innovative and high-growth companies, particularly in sectors such as technology, biotech, and renewable energy. Cross-border lending can generate important benefits, especially in relation to private sector risk sharing across countries. Banks can reduce the concentration and home bias of their exposures, while borrowers can broaden their access to financing and strengthen funding resilience when the domestic market is under stress. Yet, the European banking sector is still fragmented. Over the past decade, little progress has been made in integrating banking groups across borders. And when consolidation in the banking sector does occur, it is often at the national level. Despite the existence of a European supervisory and resolution framework, a number of prudential and resolution requirements, such as capital, liquidity, and loss absorbing requirements, are still national in nature. This is a major obstacle to integration. To foster cross border banking, we should make it easier for banks to operate as truly integrated groups within the banking union. For this to happen, there needs to be the same possibilities for pooling capital and liquidity across legal entity entities located in different member states as there are for banking groups operating within a single member state. We should also take a more harmonized approach and a banking union perspective when setting minimum standards for capital buffers. In times of crisis, further harmonizing bank crisis management across the banking union will enhance the level playing field in Europe. The stakeholders need to be sure if a bank fails, there will be a similar outcome regardless of where in Europe the bank is domiciled. The resolution framework is a key part of this effort. And the ongoing reform of the crisis management and deposit insurance framework aims to broaden the application of a harmonized resolution framework beyond significant banks. Yet many bank failures will still be managed under national insolvency regimes, 
so further convergence on there is also needed. When a bank is wound up uh, under a national insolvency framework, the deposit guarantee scheme plays a vital role in safeguarding depositors' access to their accounts. For now, these deposit guarantee schemes are also national, which can lead to the perception that a euro deposited in one member state is safer than in another. Finally, making progress on introducing a European deposit insurance scheme, it is, should be a priority for the next legislative term. EDIS could bring us closer to the vision of a true single market for a banking in Europe. For the ECB's Governing Council, a more integrated EU banking market is a key reason to develop a capital market union and establish a single market for capital in the EU. Previous editions of the report presented today have illustrated the need to further integrate financial markets to enhance the euro area economy's resilience through private risk sharing and to strengthen the international role of our common currency. It has become increasingly clear that European capital markets are instrumental in the pursuit and financing of the EU's strategic goals. We need massive investment to drive the green and digital transitions, and we must boost the EU's productivity and competitiveness. A starting point for the discussion is often the relative success of US capital markets, which can be attributed to several factors. A significant one is the global role of the dollar in international finance. A common set of laws and regulation on trading financial assets ensures the coherence of U.S. capital markets. This is supported by the market of U.S. treasuries, the largest and most liquid asset in the world. And a consolidated trading and post-trading landscape also encourages investor participation in the market. These elements contribute to the pivotal role that U.S. capital market play in financing innovation firms domestically and internationally. Drawing on these initiatives to promote pan-EU capital markets should first focus on enhancing both the supply and, or, uh, uh, and demand for capital market funding. I see, several, I, I see several concrete action points. The first is to channel Europe's saving towards EU equity and bond market by developing EU-wide saving products subject to a common framework and a harmonized tax incentives. Second, we need to develop equity markets to make them more attractive for issuers and investors. Risk capital markets are particularly important for fostering the innovation necessary for the green and digital transition. Third, we must mobilize securitization markets for capital market union. Comparing uh, the Union and the U.S. markets highlights the role that U.S. government-sponsored enterprises play in fostering standardization and market depth in the U.S. Nevertheless, we must remember that simply increasing finance is not enough to achieve economic growth. Funding needs to be used in the most effective way possible. This is why we also need policies that support economic restructuring and projects that pro provide opportunity, uh, projects that provide opportunities for more productive in funding. Finally, the push for capital market union or a savings and um, investment union should go ha hand in hand with renewed efforts to remove barriers within the single market. Further harmonization of corporate insolvency rules, accounting frameworks, and securities law is needed to establish a single capital market with a scale and depth. Let me conclude. Financial integration has supported the euro area's resilience in the face of significant geopolitical risks, economic shocks, and unprecedented high levels of inflation. This is uh, reassuring. However, the decline in certain measures and the sluggish progress towards greater integration is really disappointing. Urgent action is therefore needed to increase investment in the EU and establish clear priorities to address the challenges ahead. Advancing capital market union should be a critical political project for the new European Commission. It should go hand in hand with strengthening the resilience of the non-bank financial sector as it consolidates its important importance in financing the EU's real economy. At the same time, Europe remains primarily bank-based and completing the banking union remains a priority. A single capital market needs to come in addition to and no uh, and not instead of a complete banking union. Setting up uh, EDIS should be high on the agenda 
in the next uh, EU legislative term. It is essential for depositor confidence and for ensuring a level playing, playing field for banks. Both the capital markets unions and the banking union should be viewed within the broader context of the European project. Enrico Letta's recent report rightly considers the single market as central to financing strategic goals, competitiveness, and the future of the union. Removing existing barriers within the market for goods and services and advancing in the three strategic sectors that were previously excluded from the single market, namely financial services, energy, and telecommunications, will allow us to benefit from the full scale of the market. The single market for goods and services is essential to attract investment, make our economic and monetary union more attractive, and support the EU's role as a global player on the international stage. At the same time, stated procedures must guarantee a level playing field and be compatible with the single market. Lastly, a permanent EU central fiscal capacity remains essential to the European project. It could enable us to tackle geopolitical and economic challenges more effectively. And by supporting investment in strategically important areas, generating economics, economies of scale and raising productivity across the bloc, it could help to improve the welfare of European citizens while further enhancing financial integration in the European Union. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. I wonder, we, we still have time in the agenda for some questions, if you are willing to answer questions. So, questions from the room? And we should have a, a mic. There are any questions? It's been a long day. I think you delivered on uh, more details on the policy aspects and you also broadened the scope beyond uh, what much of the discussion was about, apart from a few questions, namely CMU, but you also went beyond that. And maybe you've been so complete that uh, we have no further feedback. Perhaps, uh, perhaps you know, one comment from my side. Uh, I think that the main message, well, the outcomes, I suppose that you have analyzed, uh, you know, the different indexes that you have available. And uh, the outcome is uh, a little bit disappointed in terms of financial integration. That's the main conclusion of the of the of the different numbers that, for sure, you have been analyzing and uh, the outcome of the report. But I think that uh, it's very important to ask why. And I think that uh, sometimes, uh, well, you know, we are focusing on finance and capital market union and the banking union, and I think that they are key aspects. But I think that perhaps, uh, you know, the lack of financial integration at the end of the day responds to the real economy. And uh, uh, why don't we have, uh, we don't have, uh, you know, projects and European projects that are attractive enough? And why, you know, the fragmentation that sometimes we see in the single market is not reflected, is not mirrored eh, in terms of, uh, of finance? I think that this is a big question. Because for sure that uh, in the future, you know, well, we will continue having some data, we will have up and downs in terms of financial integration. But I think that uh, in order to have, you know, a real fully integrated financial market in Europe, have a real capital market union, I think that we have to make progress in several fronts. Thank you very much for this uh, compliment and for the speech, uh, Mr. Vice President. So, this is now the, the time for concluding the conference. I won't do any wrap-up this time. We have a rich to-do list on a tentative basis. Let me just end up with uh, two small uh, additions. The sort of idiomatic approach, like uh, low-hanging fruits, uh, glass half empty, half full. And I would prefer to uh, repeat what I heard from the Scots supporters yesterday in the tram. No CMU, no party. Having said that, have a safe trip home. <laughs>